Hello everybody. Today I'm going to explain what is a bandpass filter. A bandpass filter is a filter that passes signals within a certain frequency range and rejects or attenuates all the frequencies outside of that range. It is a combination of low pass and high pass filter because there are two cutoff frequencies involved in this particular bandpass filter. So the exact frequency response of the filter depends on the filter design, which we'll look in a bit. And the signal coming out of such a filter is often referred to as a bandpass signal because it contains only the frequencies within that band and doesn't contain any frequencies outside of that band. All right, let's study about ideal bandpass filter and real bandpass filters. So an ideal bandpass filter is one that has full transmission in the pass band and complete attenuation in the stop band and the transition is an abrupt one. As you can look in the picture, you know, the you have a block and in the in the middle you have the pass band and on the either sides you have stop band. So what an ideal bandpass filter does is it accepts every single frequency in the pass band and rejects every single frequency in the stop band. So if let's say if the band is like 500 to 5000 hertz it'll accept everything in that range and reject everything else outside of that range so it has a frequency response which is a rectangular function and is often referred to as a brick wall filter because it's, it's just so flat all right let's look at a more realistic filter which is a real bandpass filter all right a real bandpass filter approximates the ideal one by truncating and windowing the infinite impulse response to a finite one However, there is a slight limitation. It doesn't attenuate all the frequencies outside the pass band, which is the stop band. We'll look at that in a bit. So the transition is no longer an abrupt one. You know, unlike the ideal filter, it's no longer a brick wall kind of transition. It's not a flat transition, but rather a smooth one due to the application of a window. Typical window examples are hemming, hand flat top, and there are a lot more. So as you can observe in the picture, there is a smooth transition between the stop band and the pass band. And this is what leads to a limitation which we'll discuss. Alright, in this picture, the green block represents the pass band and everything outside of that on either side represents the stop band. So a band pass filter theoretically has to accept every single frequency in the pass band and reject everything else in the stop band. But as we can observe here, it doesn't happen like that. It ends up accepting everything in the pass band, which is good but it also ends up accepting something beyond the pass band as well, for some regions in the stop band as well. Why does it happen like that? This is because of the smooth transition between the pass band and stop band. You know, the frequencies in the stop band are not completely rejected, but are attenuated, and the attenuation increases as we move on the other side. This is technically referred to as filter roll-off, and it's expressed in decibel per octave or decibel per decade. Okay, but filters are designed to minimize roll-off. You know, it's not completely possible to eliminate the roll-off, but it is possible to mitigate it. We'll discuss later in this video. Alright, what is a bandwidth of a filter? It is nothing but the difference between the upper and the lower cutoff frequencies. So in this picture, you can observe that FL represents a lower cutoff frequency and FH is the upper. So the bandwidth is the absolute difference between those two. So consider FL is 500 and FH is 5000 Hertz. So the difference is 4500 Hertz, which is nothing but the bandwidth. All right, let's talk about the types of bandpass filters. Well, there are two major types of circuits that end up achieving the bandpass filtering, similar to the low pass and high pass. So one is the capacitive bandpass filter, also referred to as the RC bandpass filter, and the other is the inductive bandpass filter or the RL BPF. So the RC BPF version shorts out frequencies below and above the pass band, whereas the RL one blocks out frequencies below and above the pass band. Let's discuss these types of filters in detail. All right, so what is the RC bandpass filter? This is a filter constructed using two resistors and two capacitors. The first capacitor is in parallel with the input signal, while the second one is in series with the input signal. Same is true for both resistors. In fact, the first resistor is in series with the input signal, whereas the second one is in parallel with the input signal. All right, the equation for the cutoff frequency is the same, is f equals 1 over 2 pi times r times c. Now, f1 represents the lower cutoff frequency, and f2 represents the higher cutoff frequency. In order to achieve those particular cutoff frequencies, you know, they are dependent on the particular resistors and capacitors. Resistances are measured in ohm, capacitance in farad, and frequency in hertz. All right, let's look at the circuit diagram. All right, so this is a circuit diagram for a RC-type bandpass filter. 
As we can observe on the left, there is the input, which is connected in series with the resistor R1 in parallel with resistor R2, and the opposite is true for capacitor C1 and C2. It is important to note that the resistor R1 and capacitor C1 form a low-pass filter, and similarly, the resistor R2 and capacitor C2 form a high-pass filter. And the output is nothing but a band-pass filter, which specifically contains frequencies only in the chosen pass band. Alright, let's study the working principle of a RC band-pass filter. Well, let's warm up a little bit on what are the components. So, a capacitor is a reactive device which offers varying resistance to signals of different frequencies entering through it. Especially, it offers very high resistance to low frequency signals, but offers very low resistance to high frequency signals. And this is the principle on which the filtering is achieved. So, you know, the, this circuit achieves filtering in two stages because there are two capacitors and two resistors. All right, in the circuit diagram, the resistor R1 is in series with the input signal and the capacitor C1 is in parallel with the input signal. And this setup forms a low pass filter. So the capacitor C1 has a cutoff frequency, and when the input signal does reach there, only the frequencies higher than the cutoff frequency are allowed to pass through the capacitor C1, while the frequencies below the cutoff are not allowed to pass through the capacitor, but they are directed to the second stage. So let's say the, the cutoff frequency of the capacitor was around 5000 Hz, which means all the frequencies beyond 5000 has passed through the capacitor and is just, you know, gone out. So the important frequencies, which is below 5000 Hz, has just moved to the second stage. Alright, the second stage consists of a capacitor in series and a resistor in parallel to the input signal. And this setup acts as a high pass filter. Now, from the incoming signal, which is nothing but 0 to 5000 Hz, only frequencies higher than the cutoff frequency pass through the capacitor, meaning the capacitor has a cutoff frequency. And let's say in this example it has a 500 Hz cutoff frequency. So all the frequencies beyond 500 Hz are allowed to pass through, while those below 500 are blocked. So we know that the, you know, the frequencies uh, in the second stage are 0 to 5000 Hz, and if only frequencies beyond 500 Hz would be allowed, so the answer is that frequencies between 500 and 5000 Hz will be accepted. That is nothing but the pass band frequencies, and hence band pass filtering has been achieved. Alright, let's look at another type of band pass filter, which is the RL type. So RL circuit band pass filter is constructed using two resistors and two inductors in this case. So similar to the RC type, you know, the first inductor is in parallel with the input signal, while the second is in series with the input signal. And same is true for resistors. So the first resistor is in series with the input, and the second is in parallel. The equation is R over 2 pi L. There are two frequencies, which is the lower cutoff frequency and the higher cutoff frequency. And each frequency is dependent on a specific resistance value and an inductance value. Resistances are measured in ohm, inductances in Henry, and frequency in hertz. All right, let's study the circuit diagram. All right, the circuit diagram for an RL type bandpass filter is exactly the same as a RC circuit. You know, in place of uh, capacitors, we have inductors. So the first resistor is connected as in series with the input signal, and the second was in parallel, and opposite is true for the inductors. The first one is in parallel, and the second one is in, is in series with the input signal. It is important to note that the resistor R1 and the inductor L1 form a high-pass filter. And similarly, the resistor R2 and inductor L2 form a low-pass filter. And the output is a band-pass filter. Alright, let's discuss about the working principle of a RL-type band-pass filter. To warm up, an inductor is also a reactive device just like the capacitor which offers varying resistance signals of different frequencies passing through it. However, an inductor offers very high resistance to high frequency signals but very low resistance to low frequency signals. And similar to the RC type, the RL type also achieves filtering in two stages because it has two inductors and two resistors. However, it achieves filtering, you know, opposite of that of the RC type. You know, it achieves high pass filter first and then the low pass filtering. All right, as you observed in the circuit diagram, the resistor R1 is connected in series to the input signal and the inductor L1 is in parallel with the input signal. 
so the inductor has its own cutoff frequency so it'll accept everything below the cutoff and reject everything above the cutoff frequency so let's say when the input signal does reach the inductor all the frequencies below the cutoff pass through the inductor while everything above the cutoff they're just blocked and they are directed in fact to the second stage let's say the cutoff frequency was 500 hertz what it means is 0 to 500 hertz pass through the inductor and the more important ones which is 500 hertz and above they are directed to the second stage in the second stage the resistor r2 is in parallel with the input signal whereas the inductor l2 is in series with the input signal this forms a low pass filter so the, again the inductor has a cutoff frequency it'll accept every single frequency below a particular cutoff and reject everything above the cutoff so the incoming signal is 500 hertz and above and let's say in this case in this example the cutoff frequency is 5000 hertz so it'll accept everything from 500 hertz and just stop at 5000 hertz it'll not accept anything beyond 5000 hertz so the output signal is nothing but the pass band frequencies containing 500 hertz to 5000 hertz thus band pass filtering has been achieved once again using rl type circuit all right let's talk about higher order filters First, what is the order of a filter? The order of a filter is determined by the number of reactive elements in the circuit. By reactive elements, I mean capacitors and inductors. For example, a first order filter is either one capacitor or one inductor. But as we studied about the bandpass filter and looked at the circuit diagrams, clearly we observed more than one capacitor. We observed two capacitors and two resistors, or two inductors and two resistors. Another important thing to note is the filter order is directly related to the slope of the frequency response curve. Higher the order, steeper is the slope, and especially for a bandpass filter, higher is the order, lesser is the roll-off. Alright, this is a snap of a fourth order bandpass filter frequency response, and I've chosen the pass band to be 500Hz to 5000Hz. Notice that it doesn't exactly start at 500 and end at 5000, you know, because of the smooth windowing function. But you can observe the slope. This is a fourth order filter, and I'll be displaying an eighth order filter. Clearly, slope is going to increase drastically, and it's going to get you know thinner and thinner. All right, this is an eighth order filter for the same pass band of 500 hertz to 5000 hertz. Notice the difference in the slope. It is getting steeper, and also most important, the roll off is decreasing. So if you remember that I mentioned that it's not possible to eliminate the roll-off completely, but it is possible to mitigate it. And if you keep increasing the order, you know, you can end up uh, decreasing the roll-off to a great extent. All right, now's the time to experience what a bandpass filter even sounds like. Uh, for the purposes of demonstration, I'll be using a white noise signal. All right, a quick introduction on white noise. It is a random noise signal having equal intensity at different frequencies giving it a constant power spectral density. What it means is every single frequency in the human audible range of 20 Hz to 20 kHz will be played at the same time and at the same amplitude. So first I'll be playing a pure white noise signal and then I'll be applying a bandpass filter of 500 Hz to 5000 Hz, a fourth order one, and then followed by the eighth order one. Alright, I hope you heard the pure white noise and the filtered white noise. Now let's talk about the applications. Well, bandpass filters are widely used in wireless transmitters and receivers. So the main function of a bandpass filter in a transmitter or a receiver is to limit the bandwidth only to a particular you know, band, which is the pass band, and reject everything outside of that, which is a stop band. So it limits itself to that particular band. And, you know, a most important outcome of this is that it prevents the transmitter from interfering with other stations you know if it if it only accepts a band of frequencies you know it'll never accept anything outside of that and it'll never interfere with other stations or other frequencies the same principle is applicable for a receiver it'll only accept frequencies in a particular band and it'll never accept anything outside of that band Another application is a digital bandpass filter. They are used in audio editing softwares. You know, they have a wide variety of applications like music editing, mixing, and analysis. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, hit the comments. I'll be sure to respond. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.